I'm with Earl Mack this morning. Earl is the president of the Toledo Buffalo Soldiers, local motorcycle club that does community work uh, here in Northwest Ohio and is also a candidate, an independent candidate for the Lucas County Sheriff's Office. The election is coming up on November 3rd. Uh, Earl is the third interview we've done with the candidates. Mike Navarro is running as a Democrat. Uh, Brett Warner is running as a Republican and Earl is on the ballot. Uh, as an independent. Earl, thanks a lot for the time this morning. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for bringing us on. Thank you. Uh, let's start with, uh, as I did with the other candidates, uh, what got you into law enforcement in the first place, and maybe just a little uh, thumbnail sketch of uh, your experience in law enforcement. Okay. Well, um, uh, I, I tell you what, what really did it for me. I, I used to be a musician, uh, I played across the country, and uh, and we had our own group, and uh, and this is is after my military service, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what what happened was one day we 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 were out playing some some music, and I walked uh, into a room where where my brother was, and I seen a needle stuck in his arm. I never knew he was a heroin addict, uh, and so that 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 really um, how can I say it? I mean it it devastated devastated me kind of. Yeah. And so what what happened was um, I started seeing drug use uh, in in the music industry more and more, and I just felt like I needed to get out of it. Uh, and an uncle of mine, Fred, that that that, that was a warden of the Dayton uh, Penitentiary in, in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I I talked with him about what what I seen, how I felt, and he he told me he says, "Have you ever thought about law enforcement?" Uh, and, 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 and I had at one time, when I was a small child, I used to play a police officer at home. Yeah. And I used to line up four chairs uh, in, in, in our living room and put all, all my brothers in these four chairs, and I was always the chief. Uh, and so I've always had a desire to be a police officer from, from a little kid, and he knew that. Uh, well, he talked to me uh, about law enforcement. He asked me if, I, if I've ever used my GI Bill to go to school, and I told him no. And so he kind of di directed me that way. Uh, I applied uh, to go to the University of Toledo. They, uh, I was accepted, and I started out in their in their law enforcement program, uh, receiving a a a, a associate's degree first uh, in, in 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 law enforcement technology. And there is where I met uh, uh, Dr. Tail, which later became Sheriff Tail, uh, and he became one of my mentors. Uh, in, in, in navigating me through, through, through my whole uh, law enforcement career. I didn't uh, realize that, uh, that uh, you had met uh, Sheriff Tell before he was a, a sheriff. That's a good connection. Uh, oh, yeah. You've got over 30 years uh, in law enforcement. Uh, give us a little bit of the rundown of the jobs that you've had during those years. Okay, well, I first started out as a, as a University of Toledo police officer. Uh, and from there, uh, I became a, a street liquor agent with the Ohio Department of Liquor Control. Mm -hmm. uh, I was stationed in Cleveland uh, on my first duty uh, for, for about uh, eight years there. Uh, at that, and do, during those times, you couldn't work your home district because of undercover work. Okay. Uh, and okay. so from there, uh, I went to be a squad leader uh, in 1987. Uh, I became a squad leader of two enforcement squads. Uh, and then from there, I became assistant agent in charge of enforcement operations uh, in Toledo, Ohio. And then I was promoted to agent in charge of the Cincinnati district operations, uh, which covered about 21 counties. Uh, and then this is very short because we'll be here all day. Uh, and, 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 from, and from there, I was given a, a temporary appointment as deputy director of, of liquor control enforcement operation for the whole state of Ohio. It was a political position. Uh, and so uh, uh, they needed somebody to sit in that position until, until they filled, filled, that, uh, filled that position. Once that position was filled, I was able to come return back to Toledo as the agent in charge of Toledo enforcement operation. Uh -huh. uh, and then from there in 19, uh, or sorry, in 2007, I was appointed Deputy Director of Ohio Homeland Security. So that's going through uh, just 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 the job uh, there uh, at, 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 as to what we did in, in that law enforcement career. Well, let me go into something that we've asked the other candidates too, uh, has to do with cooperation and collaboration. Uh, and it sounds like you've worked with a lot of different agencies around the state. 
uh, I would imagine a lot of different municipalities and sheriff's departments around mm -hmm. the state. Um, how does collaboration and cooperation with these other forces uh, play into what you would bring to your role as a sheriff of Lucas County? Oh man, you know, in, in all those p positions, we, we talk about force multiplying. Uh, because you can't do it yourself, and 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 partnership, collaboration, uh, is is a is a is needed to get our jobs done, uh, uh, and so that collaboration and, and 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 as you earlier stated, I mean, it happened under liquor control. Obviously, we we were state agents, and we had to work with other law enforcement uh, operations throughout the state, federal law enforcement operations as well, uh, and then and then becoming a homeland security deputy director with, with a lot more uh, responsibility and a lot more weight on your shoulders because there I was in, I was in charge of all critical infrastructure in Ohio and okay. part of a fusion center and the Northern Border Initiative and so forth and so on. And you needed to have that cl collaboration between law enforcement agencies uh, to then force multiply to get the job done to keep Ohio safe uh, and ultimately the United States safe. Uh, safe. And so the, those, the, those cooperations is very important to, to a law enforcement agency and, and will be to the sheriff's office. Now, the sheriff's office has been described uh, to me as, well, focusing on the jail for the most part. Uh, they don't necessarily do the jobs that most people see police doing, pulling people over, uh, arresting people for things like that. Uh, so how do you see the job? Uh, of the sheriff's department in Lucas County, because I know you've worked with sheriff's department in other, other counties too. How do you see the job here in Lucas County? Well, I tell you, Fred, I come with, with a broad perspective of, of, uh, of enforcement operations for a sheriff's department because I work with, with just about all 88 county sheriffs. Uh, and I know a lot of those operations, some operations are, 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 are jail um, uh, or, or, or corrections, uh, mostly corrections. Some of those operations are our, our combination of corrections, a lot of a lot of uh, law enforcement because of rural areas that that don't have police departments. Uh -huh. uh, 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 I see that operation as twofold, two phases: yeah, the the corrections operation and then enforcement operations, street enforcement operations as well. Now you know the sheriff department does a lot more than that, uh, such as serving papers of uh, uh, the court systems, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, and so uh, I see that as, as, a, as a big combination, uh, but we also are going to do street enforcement uh, as well and be the leader uh, in, uh, in, in, that, in that particular enforcement operation. So when we talk about, let's uh, focus on the jail, for instance, for a minute, because that's uh, almost the number one topic when we talk to people about the sheriff's race is what are you going to do about the jail? Where should the jail go? What are your thoughts on the jail uh, now that the vote has been made not to put it up in the North End? Where do you stand on that? Well, I tell you, um, and, 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 and I'm a little bit different. Um, uh, you, you know, the, the, the reason why, why the jail was voted on the stay downtown because a particular politician was really um, uh, telling voters where the jail was going to go based off of what, where he wanted it to go. Uh -huh. So there was a coalition uh, that was formed. Uh, that challenged that, uh, and 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 the best way to challenge that was to keep the jail downtown uh, 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 because it, it it was the easiest way to go. So because they didn't want that jail being shoved down, you know, the locations down anyone's throat uh, that it will go here or there. And so and so it was a vote to keep the jail downtown. Uh, however, however, Fred is that is, is that I'm a coalition kind of guy uh, for sure, and so. And so if we are fortunate to, to walk into the sheriff's office uh, where it relates to the jail, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna form that coalition that's gonna involve community, is gonna involve every law enforcement agency uh, throughout the county and some of our criminal justice leaders where we're gonna sit around the table and talk about this jail. What kind of jail do we wanna see? Do we, wanna see? Do, do we really want, want to stay downtown? And, 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 and I'm not against that, but but I'm for allowing the people, the people to say where they really want this jail. If okay. they keep it downtown, man, there's some wonderful areas downtown, such as the Green Belt Parkway and, and some other places uh, that, you know, that have room to put a jail downtown for sure. But, but, but let me remind people of this because the Sheriff Department's operation includes this already, is that, man, technology 
you can put that jail any anywhere in uh, you know in the county because of technology. You can have video conferencing for you know for court hearings, uh, for for even uh, uh, for for court trials. Uh, there's a lot you can do uh, electronically. Uh, you know, involved in that jail where, where you won't need so many people, uh, you know, deputies to take people back and forth to jail under, under right. a, uh, and, and they do some of that now. Now, one of the complaints that I have heard, though, uh, from deputies is that they were left out of the decision-making process originally. Would they be included in whatever coalition that you put together? Oh, absolutely. A absolutely, Fred. That's part of that, of that coalition. I, I just had some 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 meetings with, with some of the uh, correction officers and, and deputies uh, for a couple of days, uh, and, and and when I asked the question, where were, were you asked, uh, you know, where where you would like the jail to go, uh, it was it was almost unanimously across the board no, and so I don't know how you can you can then start talking about uh, you know where to place the jail, what to do with that jail if the, if the employees aren't in, aren't included because they are the ones that have to run the jail, right. so. And so most de most definitely, they are going to be included uh, in that process and in other processes as, as well. Uh, one of the other things that uh, comes up uh, almost uh, universally when we talk to uh, anybody who's in law enforcement is uh, the defund slash refund movement that's going on right now. Now, mostly these groups are talking about municipalities, uh, cities defunding and refunding their police departments. It hasn't come to the sheriff's office yet. But in general terms, how do you feel about the defund slash refund movement? Well, um, uh, and, and, and based off of, of my understanding of what people are talking about to defund or refund the police department, I think a lot of that involves emotion. When you don't sit down and talk with people, people come up with all kinds of ideas, you know, if, uh, uh, you know, to kind of force your, you know, force their, their way to have you sit down with them to talk with, with them. Mm -hmm. Some of the problems across this country that I see in law enforcement, we don't talk to our citizens and our citizens don't talk to the police. So, 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 so no, uh, we can't defund any kind of law enforcement operations whatsoever. Uh, uh, in, in, in my opinion, if we're talking about re reallocating, you know, funds, then some of that needs to be put back into training because we've lost so much funds involving training. Uh, we, uh, we lost so much funds. Uh, you know, involving, uh, you know, the type of equipment that, that departments need to, you know, to, to do their job. Uh, uh, and, and also uh, the kind of funds to, to really get the best of the best uh, law enforcement officers, uh, you know, in those positions. Because one of the things I always say, we need some, some of the best supervision in, uh, you know, in a law enforcement system. Because if you carry a firearm, you have the authority at any time to take a life. Man, you need more supervision than a truck driver, than a cab driver, than any of that. And yeah. so, and so supervision is very important. And, and I will say say this: this involving law enforcement, because there's another side of that that involves the community. Uh, is 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 that if you find an officer that is so comfortable to do the kind of things that we've seen out there uh, of, of these few officers, I have to look at it and say, who made an atmosphere so comfortable that you're able to do what what you do in? And that has to be supervision. There has to be accountability all the way up the chain. So is the training that's not being done on the supervisor's role, or is the training that's not being done in the rank and file, or is it a combination of both at this point then? Well, uh, in my opinion, and what I see, Fred, is it, 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 it's a combination of, of both. I know one, one thing uh, in, in the Department of Public Safety, we were, we were under the highway patrol, and I called them my, my big brother. Mm -hmm. is, is, is that we've done a lot of training, especially super training and supervision. We had first line supervision training. We had we we had middle management training. We had senior management training in law enforcement. If you don't uh, constantly have those those kinds of of of, of events uh, going on, you start having problems uh, because you don't have the latest of the latest techniques out there as a supervisor and uh, what you need to do in law enforcement. The other side of that is 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 is, is your personnel training. The, the rank and file training. You know, I always say police officers need to know 100% of what they're supposed to do and how they are supposed to do it. That comes with training. That yeah. comes with enforcement of that training. That comes with, 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 with accountability of supervision to make sure that their officers are doing the things that we want them to do according to policy, according to uh, uh, rules, and according to law. 
And I always say this, you know, we for, for Ohio to be a peace officer, you go uh, through the peace officers, basic peace officer training uh, program. Uh, and there's, there's requirements in that program. Uh, there's standards in that program, you know, that you have to meet. But not only that, because I hear a lot of times of mayors and, and even the governor, you know, we sent a letter to the governor about something not, uh, not too many weeks ago. Uh, you, 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 you know, everybody's talking about making these, these 12 point to 20 point programs. Right. Like this. Man, we already have that if you follow the guidelines, uh, you know, of, of OPADA. And then if you follow the guidelines of court decisions, court decisions also uh, govern the way police officers conduct uh, are in the street. And so we have a lot of things there already. We just need to have those things reinforced and those that, that, that need to be retrained to retrain them and those that need to be trained on those systems and how we do things, they need to be trained. So you're not starting from the ground up. You're taking the Opala thing that you mentioned and just reinforcing that on every level of law enforcement? Absolutely. And I think every, every roll call for, for street law, law enforcement, every roll call should, should come with, with, you know, with, with some re reciting of, of what the policy is or, or, mm -hmm. or, or, or at least some, some, uh, uh, some, some accountability of what the policy is. Uh, and, and, and those talk, that's what, that's what roll call is about. Uh, you know, roll call is about, you know, what's happening out there in the street. And then, hey, you know, re remember, we're public servants. And, and, and that's what a lot of police officers don't want to hear, that we're public servants. We serve the public. Uh, and so, and we talk about law enforcement, too. You know, we really need to talk about a peace officer. A peace officer uh, is, 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 is what we go to train for, is to keep the peace. And so, and, and so police, police officers need to, need to be reinforced in that too, that we are peace officers to keep the peace, to kind of change that, that, that mentality of we against you a lot of times. Now, mm -hmm. I'll say this too, on the other side of that is citizens. You know, sometimes I tell our citizens, we need to look in the mirror yeah. because, mm -hmm. be, be, because the actions of our citizens can then escalate to what a police officer has to do to do their job. And then all, all, of, a sudden, all of a sudden, the, uh, the you know, citizens get, get upset over it and angry. It's not a it's not a pretty sight out there to do law enforcement one on one on a citizen. That's why they carry mace, they carry tasers, they carry a firearm because it's it's not a pretty sight out there. And sometimes when people have not been a law enforcement officer, and they see the things that we have to do, especially when when it becomes a, a physical confrontation, man, everybody's looking at you go, oh, but but they never look at at at, at what brought us to to that. And even on the on the back end of that, if a police officer is found that they've done something that wasn't consistent with policy or law, man, on the front of that, if you just comply, we wouldn't have to get to that. Right. So, so there, there's some learning on both sides that have to happen. So, and you mentioned the difficulty of dealing with the public in general. And officers on a regular basis are seeing people a lot of oh. times at their worst. Uh, yeah. There's been a shooting, there's been a, a, a stabbing, you're pulling them over, they don't understand why, uh, they're coming out of a building, they resemble a suspect, whatever. That's got to play on the mental uh, stability of the officers who are dealing with this. How do you cope with the mental health of your officers on the street? I mean, that's, that's why supervision is so, so important. Uh, because you, you're absolutely right, officers do so much out there now. You know, they, they have to be a, a, a mental health uh, you know, they, they have to deal with mental health crisis at times, uh, domestic violence, uh, uh, all kinds of things uh, uh, that you just talked about. They, they even have to, have to be uh, uh, school resource officers. And, yeah. and I know people are going to beat me up on that. But I tell you what, when, when you and I were, were, were in school, Fred, did, did we ever have a police resource, resource officer in our school? No. What, what, what was our resource officer was a paddle. What was our resource officer at home was a belt. And what we've done uh, in society is we've taken the discipline out of the home, then we took it out of the school. And, and I always say this, you know, you kid, kids go to school nowadays, a lot of them, uh, and the, the teachers are afraid of, of kids, they're afraid to, 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 you know, to address problems or put their hands on kids if they have to break up a fight. The, the principal is afraid of the kids, the school board is afraid of the kids, and the kids is not afraid of nobody. That makes yeah. no sense yeah. whatsoever. So we need to get that discipline back because that's some of the issues that police officers deal with every day. If you grow up uh, not with that discipline, that discipline as you grow up into a young adult, into into you know into manhood or womanhood, and you carry uh, that with you, police officers have to deal with that sooner or later. Uh, and so and so, man, it's a, it's a multifaceted problem that we have to get get back to, and we need to get back to discipline in the home, discipline in the school, and respect. 
We need to teach these kids respect. And you know, Buffalo Soldiers, uh, we, we've adopted two schools, Martin Luther King's Boys Academy and L.P. Stewart Girls Academy. When we go into those schools, we, we demand respect. And, those, and um, believe me when I say this, kids will give you respect if you demand it. And we have to start at those early ages because when, 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 that, res- when that disrespect goes so far, it's hard to change that, man. And, and, yeah. and, and that's, what, you know, that's what some of the pipeline to prison is uh, b- because we don't deal with these things early on in our children's life. So as a sheriff, uh, and I can tell you this, Sheriff Tharbot, I just love this, 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 this cat to death, man, because he's the one that, that had us adopt uh, L.P. Stewart School. He came to me one day and said, Earl, you know, I'm, I'm in L.P. Stewart School. These girls need some help. Will, will the Buffalo Soldiers adopt them? And, and we did. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And sometimes we, we, have, we have contests against each other because he buys the, uh, uh, the girls, girls uh, basketball team uniform. Right. And Buffalo Soldiers buy the uniform. And, we, and we're fighting over who's going to wear the uniform this day, so forth and so on. So, so it's, it's, it's uh, it, you know, it's a great, uh, a great program that we have. But, but, but police officers, and particularly sheriffs, have to set the tone for the county uh, in our community uh, so that other uh, police departments can follow that. And, and let me just say this, if you allow me, training-wise, you know, the governor talked about spending money on training. He talked right. about the grants and so forth and so on. And then, and, and, and then he talked about giving funds to this police department, police department. Well, we have 88 counties uh, in, in the state. And I remember coming up as a young law enforcement officer, we had, the, we, uh, we, we had a, a, a law enforcement training center here off of Collinwood. And the sheriff department basically, uh, 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 there, there was a, a committee that involved the sheriff sitting, sitting at the front of the table and other chiefs around it. And we, we then uh, formulated the kind of training that we need our officers to have. And it, and, and, it went, and, and it was geared towards one funnel. And so to me, all the training dollars should go to a sheriff department that then sit down with its chiefs in its county. We talk about what kind of training our officers need because guess what, Fred? We need consistency across the board. So when you come to a, to a, to a deputy in the street, the same consistency the deputy has in the street, Toledo Police Department has in the street, Mommy has in the street, so forth and so on. So that sure. training, it, it needs to be funneled into one source and we need to sit around as a coalition and talk about what kind of training and, and retraining uh, and, and reinforcement of that training officers need. All right, so the training part, sound, sounds like you've got that down. I'm curious about the mental health of the officers though, uh, because they go through a lot and they have to deal with a lot. Do we need special training? Do we need special resources to maintain the mental health of our on-street officers? Well, with them, have, have, uh, de- you know, de- dealing with so much that, that the general public uh, does not deal with, it needs to be an assessment, a constant assessment of the mental health of our police officers. Mm-hmm. Because, be, because, you know, uh, I'm sure, you know, there's the suicide is high in this country amongst police officers. Uh, domestic violence amongst police officers are, are high in this country as well. And so if we don't care for those officers, they, if they bring that stuff home with them and there's no way to release that, uh, then we have an issue. I remember uh, uh, there used to be a time that 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 you would put an undercover officer undercover for years and you, years, and you and you never cared for that undercover officer. That undercover officer then became what they were working. So 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 there had to be an assessment, a constant assessment of that undercover officer while working undercover. The same thing police officers need, uh, and we and we don't we we do not do a good job at that. When something happens, if a police officer unfortunately have to take a life or there's some kind of serious altercation, then that's when they're pulled back. They're, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're placed in a, in a non-sensitive position and then they're, then they're given assessment then. We need assessment constantly with our police officers. It needs to be an open door policy where, where they can walk into a, a, a psychologist's office, uh, you know, to, 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 to sit down and just, and, and just talk about their, their, their issues when it appears there, that there's no issue. So I agree with that. We need, to, we need mental uh, health, assessment of our police officers constantly. One of the things that, uh, that comes up too is, is community and the interaction between officers. Um, and now, a lot of times when people look at it, uh, they see white officers going into an African-American community, but there's African-American officers uh, in the African-American communities now too, who also have problems. How do we solve that community interaction with the police problem? Well, Fred, I just think that 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 it needs to be it needs to be constant cultural competency uh, training uh, and uh, and and assessment out there as well. 
uh, because sometimes you you take a police officer that 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 never been in this kind of community, uh, that 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 really don't know much about that community or its people other than what their perception is, and perception can be crazy at at, at times. Yeah. And so you know when when they go into those co communities, that's all they know. They're they're carrying that baggage with them, and that's why we we need to have cultural competency uh, at uh, you know for for all kinds of of of, uh, of races that are out there because our, our communities are a melting pot. Uh, I, I remember a time in Homeland Security, uh, we, we had a community engagement section, which which I plan to bring to you know to, to the sheriff department if 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 we we're fortunate to, to become your sheriff. Uh, and in that in that uh, uh, community engagement section, we had to deal with with, with a Somalia a problem that that was in Columbus. Unfortunately, a Somalian lost his life at the hands of a police officer because there was a language barrier, there was a cultural barrier. And so we put together a program to deal with that. Uh, 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 a matter of fact, we, we and I hope the, hope the patrol doesn't say, that, uh, is, is okay with this. We, we, we also had an incident that happened uh, in the highway patrol and there, and I'll tell you what, that agency is right on spot. Anytime something happens, uh, they, they're on it. We, it took, it, uh, it took us a year to put all of their officers, 1,600 officers, through this program for uh, uh, for cultural competency, uh, and 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 it got uh, great reviews. Uh, if you if you talk to to Chief Orswick uh, in, in in Sandusky, uh, 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 the, he's the chief of, uh, of the Sandusky Police Department. They had an issue there. They they brought us there. We we then put every officer uh, in in that county. On, on and, and you know through a four day program it took right. us four, four days to get everybody in there and we talked about cultural competency because that's what that's what we need police officers need to know a little bit about the people that they deal with now the bottom line is that of that though is that you still have to enforce the law regardless right. so I don't care what color you are if you're if you're in violation of the law and that's what that's what we, we tell all the officers you you still have to enforce that law and you know to keep our, our community safe but there's empathy you can have empathy you can have some some compassion. Uh, uh, I, it, you, you can talk to a lot of folks. I've arrested quite a few people in, uh, you know, in my 39 years, and and the majority of them, the majority of them will, will tell you, man, he treated me well. And I've arrested folks from from you know been involved in task forces involving murders, uh, white collar crime, blue collar crime, crime, um, uh, uh, terrorism. You know, we we uh, we you know we dealt w uh, with a guy out, out of Columbus that that that, that threatened to blow up the the uh, the, uh, the players' mall, but we treated those people with dignity. Uh, and so when when you do that, police officer, uh, and those people get out, or some of those go through the system, mm -hmm. then they remember you as an officer that man he treated me well, even though he arrested me. If you do not do that, then the next officer that come in contact with those folks have. Ha don't they have to deal problem. with the fallout. Yeah, they have to deal with the fallout. Absolutely. Correct. Correct. And yeah. so that's what that's what we, we need to understand as officers. And, and so taking that into consideration, how would you view yourself as a boss dealing with the sheriff's deputy, which is what four or five, six hundred people strong? How, how do you? What is your management style? Well, well, the first thing is this, and, and, and let me back up just for a second, if you let me, uh, you know, when we talk about the, uh, the new jail. Uh -huh. so my first priority in walking in the door is dealing with personnel, because we have some of the, uh, you know, the, the lowest morale uh, here, uh, you know, in this county. Uh, 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 there, 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 there's all kinds of personnel problems uh, 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 that you're going to have to deal with. I'm sure that that you see not, you know, not too many weeks ago, there there, there was a few deputies charged with something. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we, you know, we just had a death, uh, you know, in uh, in the jail as well. So there's some personnel issues that we have to deal with. I am, and, and when you say a boss, uh, I am part of the partnership because any employee that have ever worked for me in Homeland Security or Liquor Control will tell you that I formulate a partnership between us. Uh, because they need to have input, and that and 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 and, and that partnership begins to build mor morale. Because now they have input, uh, and and their input, somebody cares about what they say. Uh, and again, training, uh, training a lot of times also uh, uh, s supports low morale. So we have to look look at training in that agency, and that's why I can't I can't I can't look at a new jail yet until mm -hmm. our personnel is together, uh, and so. 
that's that that's what we're gonna say. I, I've all even in homeland security, I've always had an open door policy. And I know some supervisors go, man, you know, well, uh, uh, if if you have an issue that's that important to to you, my my door will, will be open to walk in the door and we sit down and we talk about that issue. But I and I just told them the other day, uh, but I always tell a, a a a subordinate when you walk into my door. You talk about an issue, if it's about a supervisor, whatever it's about. If it's about a person, after you get done, I'm going to sit you right here, and that person you're talking about, is going to. I'm going to call them into the door and sit them down, too. Now, you say this in front of them, and let's get this worked out. Yeah. If, it's, you know, if it's about an issue that you just don't, don't know what to do, that's a supervisor's problem that then we need training. We, we need to show you what to do and, 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 and how to do it. Uh, and so that's the kind of, man, I am. I, I am this way. I seek to understand. In the end, I seek to be understood. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about your uh, elevator pitch. They, they refer to it as. Uh, it's your short pitch uh, to the public. Why should they elect Earl Mack as Lucas County Sheriff when they go to cast their vote? Well, <clears throat> uh, I am a people person. I am a community person. And the Sheriff's Department has to be people and, and community. Uh, uh, I, I care about our community. I have a lot of empathy and, and, and compassion for, for our, our community. I've been through all kinds of training from, from, from the Southern Police Institute, uh, uh, a senior management program to, 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 to law enforcement senior management programs at, at, at Ohio State, University of Toledo, a drug enforcement program. Uh, I've been through all kinds of every level of, of, of first line to middle line to, 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 to senior line su supervision. So I bring that experience with me, uh, but but what I want the community to know, they are going to be part of what we do. Uh, uh, and and again, I, uh, as I said earlier, I, I believe in coalition, uh, you know, to help guide. And I always say this, Fred, too. You know, sometimes I get upset, you know, uh, over this. Will you put a, a and I'm not a politician, believe me. I don't. And you hear me talking now. And I'm, I'm not a politician. I say what what's in my heart, uh, and 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 those things that that have worked. But when you put somebody in office, man, they work for you. Uh, you, you know, you don't work for for for, uh, for them, and sometimes you look at politicians, and it's like the dog wagging the tail. Well, you you're not going to have this uh, with Earl Mack as a sheriff. I'm going to listen to you. We're going to say we uh, we're going to listen to those outline areas because sometimes people think Lucas County is the Toledo the city of Toledo because Toledo makes the decision, and the whole county has to abide by, by that decision. I'm yeah. going to be a strong sheriff. I'm going to be a strong sheriff. I'm 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 going to look at what people <clears throat> want in the sheriff department. I'm, 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 I'm going to deal with those coalitions, uh, you know, within that shared department. And we all are going, we're all in this together. We all going, are going to sit down and we're going to work this out together as, at, you know, as a community, as a, as a Lucas County community. And we're going to make this county better than, uh, you know, than, than we've ever had. Earl, I appreciate the time this morning and uh, good luck in November. Uh, Earl Mack uh, running as an independent uh, for Lucas County Sheriff's Department. Earl, thanks a lot. Thank you for your too.